Hey, rock stars, I'm JB, expert salesperson and master presenter. I'm the doctor, psychologist, and behavioral expert. This is the Entrepreneur Mastery Lab Podcast. We're high performance coaches that help service based professionals and entrepreneurs take their skills to the next level. 70% of entrepreneurs fail, which is why every week we have real talk with real entrepreneurs to help ensure you are not one of them. We're also the inventors of the Be Rich Mindset, where we rise to mastery, inspire greatness, celebrate knowledge, and help others along the way. So join us in the lab. And now, on to the show. What's up, rock stars, and welcome back to the EML Lab. I'm JB. And I'm the doctor. If it's your first time joining us, welcome to a fantastic show where we have real talk with real professionals every single week to give you the insights, the wisdom, and the knowledge you need to level up and evolve to your greatest potential. If you happen to be a returning listener or viewer, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming back for some more. If you haven't liked, subscribed, followed, given us a five-star review yet or shared us on social media, what the heck are you waiting for? We're doing this for you and to create greater impact and influence out there to help more people. So give us a hand. We could use it. Let people know that you got something great from the EML. So if there's a button to click, click it. Like, bells, thumbs up, stars, all those things. Click them all. All those things. Great. On all those platforms too. That might take a little while. So better get started now. Uh, you know, funny enough, Doc, speaking about getting started now, a great time to talk about getting started now when it comes to business planning. And the reason I say that is even though we are kind of square in the middle of the year here, uh, a lot of people never actually do reviews of their plans uh, and they just kind of write a plan or put something together at the beginning of the year and then never actually look at it again. Right. Can you believe that? Those things after you write them? I thought you write it once and it was done. That... Well, the fact that you're writing one at all. <laughs> and then being done with it's better than a lot of people. And most people don't even get that far, which is pretty incredible. So, you know, if you're a professional out there and you're kind of sitting square halfway through the year, it's a great opportunity to kind of review what you actually did and what the results were uh, to, to give yourself a little bit of gut check. And I don't mean a gut check, Doc, like um, I think a lot of people get this wrong. I don't mean a gut check like, uh, hey, did I hit my revenue target or my goal? Right, which is important to review, obviously, but you probably know that. Right? You probably don't need to look at your business plan to know that you either hit what you wanted to or you didn't in terms of revenue. Uh, but I like to review, hey, what did I actually do to drive my revenue? And was it what I wanted to do? Is that what I wanted my business to really look like? And if not, what adjustments do I need to make going into Q3 and Q4 to write the ship a little bit? So I'm, I'm like enjoying my business a little bit more instead of just doing stuff to make money. I think a lot of people fall into that trap, man. Yeah, enjoying yourself is probably a fun aspect of life. Uh, but to add to that, I think what I like about mid-year, and this is where being realistic is a big part of it, right? When we set these goals and what we look for in the beginning of the year, a lot of times we have these great views of how it's gonna go. We're really excited and we shoot these really high numbers and we shoot these really high, you know, areas to hit and sometimes we shoot a little too high and that's okay but this is a good time to to look back and say am i on the right path do i need to make some adjustments do i need to pivot is what i did then still even relevant to today and you know this is where you want to be realistic with yourself it's not a failure it's a, an experiment it's that education you're learning that maybe what you did before is not as relevant and you can make some adjustments. That doesn't mean you throw everything away, but now it gives you an idea of how to be more realistic going forward so that you can start hitting those metrics and that you can start, instead of worrying about all the things that you're not doing, really get focused on the things that you can do with the rest of the year in front of you. Yeah. It's well said, Doc, and pretty cool timing, actually, because, you know, one of the one of the metrics I had for us in our podcast at the beginning of this year was to bring on even more better guests with great perspective um, that can just have real conversations with us. And I think we've been accomplishing that hand over fist this year. And I'm really pumped uh, and super excited because we have another great guest joining us today. We've got Nikki Alley of Nikki's Foods LLC, co or founder down here in South Florida. Nikki, thanks for joining us here in the lab. Thank you for having me, guys. 
Speaking Glad of things that are good for your gut. <laughs> <laughs> so Nikki, if you could do, do our listeners and our viewers a favor, just share with them a little bit about who you are in the business that you run. Uh, so they have a better feel. Okay. Okay. Yes. So uh, again, my name is Nikki. I'm the owner of Nikki's Foods. What we do, we manufacture all natural vegetable herbs and spices uh, with olive oil, the ingredients. We have um, salad dressings, marinades, steak sauces. What we're doing is um, producing products that are healthy, that minimal to no artificial ingredients and, um, and just great tasting. Um, they are vegan and they're just delicious, delicious on any and everything. So whether you're a vegan or not, it'll work. It's just absolutely delicious. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, really excited to have you joining us and kind of curious, uh, yes. what prompted you to, to get into, you know, the food business and the marinade business and the salad dressing, kind of, what, what's the story behind that? What's the story, right? So um, I've always wanted to open up my own business, but I just didn't know what um, what what is like what to do. What 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 am I good at? But I had my. It's actually my grandmother's recipe that I tweaked. I took out all the MSG and all the um, all the other stuff that didn't necessarily work for how the natural. Um, base that I want and I tweaked it and made it just right. And what I did is that um, I started testing it out to like starting with different farmers markets and and just kind of getting a feel of what the public like, if they liked it or not, and if it's something that would work. Of course, family and friends would tell me it's great, but once you have a product, you want to know how, how people that are outside of your close family and friends, what are their thoughts. And, um, and it was great. So I, I initially, what I used to do is I used to be a manager for a retail company. And um, I just said, you know what, enough is enough. If I'm going to do it, I need to start, I need to just invest in myself. So I kind of quit. I went all in and I just started, you know, invested the money into the products and it, it kind, of, kind of just blew up from there. Um, how I got into my first store, um, I was at one of the farmer's markets and um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with, but Lucky's, it was, they used to be Lucky's Market. Um, they were down here in South Florida and one of the managers, the general managers, you know, came to the farmer's market and loved my products. And they were like, you know what, you need to come by and see us and I'll introduce you to the other management team. And then from there, I went and got into the store and it just kind of, grew from there. It's pretty exciting. So you, stomach of steel, if you're willing to just drop everything and go all in. Congra congratulations, yeah. by the way. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I was like, you know, I need to invest in myself and I need to do something because I'm, I'm the type of person, if I don't go all in, I'll just kind of go back and forth and like, ah, change my mind. But I was like, you know what, let me just do it. If I'm going to do it, do it now. I have no regrets. R.I.P. Lucky's Market. I used to love Lucky's. They they left. Us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kroger kind of pulled out on the deal, and uh, they just kind of yeah. It's a great it's concept. Okay. You can actually it's walk okay. around and drink wine and beer while you were shopping. They had it set up for it with the cart right? and the and everything. I loved it. So I can imagine why I liked yeah. it. Yeah, that's somewhat. Brilliant. <laughs> it, it reminds me a little bit of Stu Leonard's up in the Northeast where uh, the, the structure of their supermarket is designed where you have to go down every aisle, basically. Uh, and it turns out that makes you buy a whole lot more stuff when you have to go buy every product. Imagine if you were drinking. <laughs> yeah. Great selling process. That, that's oh, impressive. Uh, all right, I, I, I'm really curious. I'm really interested in this, Nikki. Um, you mentioned, hey, yes. hey, I just, I made the decision. I had to invest but into myself. Otherwise I was going to waffle. Was there, was there a specific point of discomfort there where you really finally said, this is it. This is the straw that broke the camel's back, or this is my trigger. I'm done. I'm going. Or, or, or was it really just building over time? It was building over time. I, you know, when I was in my late twenties, I was like, man, I, I'm definitely gonna. I already had my mindset of what 
what I was going to do and how everything was going to be, how life was going to be. And I noticed, I'm like, man, I, I just turned 31 and I'm like, nothing has happened. And I was like, you know what? If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And at that time, I was um, working for a particular promotion that the company unfortunately gave to someone else. And I, and I was giving it my all. And I was like, oh, man, you know what? Let me invest in myself. Let me try and see what would happen. And, and five years later, here I am. So um, I'm definitely appreciative of everything that has happened, the good, the bad, you know, the highs, lows. But it has made it, I've learned a lot along the way. So thankful for where I am right now. In, interesting. So it was a buildup, right? Uh, but was. there was this point in time that you, you specify where it's like, hey, I had a goal and right. it was a promotion and mm -hmm. and somebody it, somebody else got the promotion. So so effectively, I, I, I never like to put words in people's mouths, but if that's me, mm -hmm. I'm sitting back and going, they value that person over me or they value that person's right. performance or their future performance or, right. uh, you know, they're, they, right. they diminish me. And now that's mm -hmm. it, I'm done. Right. And, and right. It, right. It's, a, it's a powerful motivator, right. To, to be able to turn around and say, I'm done right. having somebody else tell me whether I'm good enough or not. Now, now is the time. That's it. That is absolutely it. And, um, you know, the company did what was best for them you know, at that time. And I have to respect that. And at, But then I had to look at myself and say, what is best for me? What do I need to do to make moves that I need to make to, bu to, to build a better life for myself? You know, I, I just didn't, I no longer wanted people to control um, what happens to me, my finances and my future. I said, I need to now take more control of that. Um, and I said, whether I, whether I win or whether I fail, at least I know I, I, I tried and I put in the same, the same effort that I was putting into someone else. I said, I can do the same for myself. And, um, and I just, and I, and I just took that initiative and I, and I went forward and I never looked back. I never looked back. It's awesome. It's absolutely freaking mm -hmm. awesome. Uh, <laughs> not, a, not enough people, in my opinion, are willing to, to take that shot on themselves. Uh, Mm -hmm. I, I have a real strong belief that people put a lot more trust and faith into the corporate world than maybe it has earned uh, and, right. and a little less trust and faith in themselves, which they, they have right. earned oftentimes. Uh, right. And, you know, I think for people that's, it's been programmed that way for so long too, right? Like that's part of what we're expected to do is just stay in line, follow, do what you're doing, punch your clock, go home, be a good employee. And when, you're, when your condition's so hard to do that, it's hard to break away from that. Um, you know, any it behavior is. is hard to change when it's being reinforced. And if they're reinforcing right. you every week with that paycheck, it's hard to change that, that mindset. Um, so it does take a special kind of, you know, person and mindset in, in to be able to break out of that. So if you're listening and you feel that way, understand that it, it's, it's not as easy as you think. It is something that you have to kind of work for. Absolutely. But give it a shot if you if you really have something that you're believing in. Give it a shot because the worst case scenario, you can always just go back to another company and do that again. That's not going anywhere, but your dream might be. Right, N Nikki. When you when you took the plunge, you turn around and you said, "All right, this is it. It's happening. I'm I'm going all in, uh, and and I'm going to make these moves." You know, w at any point where you're like, "Uh oh." <laughs> did you have yeah, did you have moments absolutely. where you're like, oh no? <laughs> Am yes, I just talking about that absolutely. a little bit? Absolutely. Yes. So uh, let, let me tell you. So my first event, um, after I decided to take the plunge, I was like, you know what? If I'm going to do, I'm going to go big. I, I'm already here. So I did one of uh, a, a big festival. I'm not going to say the name of the festival, but a, a huge festival where they were expecting twenty five thousand people. So I was like, okay, so if I'm going to do an event like that, if, if everyone just, you know, if I serve about uh, a thousand people, that's 10,000 bucks, you know, at $10 a play, you know? So I was like, you know, uh, I was like, you know what, let me try, let me, let me go for it and, 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 and invest in that. So the, the, um, 
for the event space, it was $2,000. Plus, you know, I, I don't have the equipment and the food and everything necessary to do the event. So I had to, you know, kind of rent all this. So let's just say I spent about uh, $5,000 altogether, you know, to, to, to do this event. And not only to, wanted to make money, but also to promote the business. Let me just say, it turned out to be a flop. The people that they were expecting did not make it. I'm telling you. And I already spent all this money and I hired all these people to work for me. And I was like, oh my God, what did I just do? You know, um, and I was like, you know what, this, this is not going to work. So I was sitting there, you know, sent, returning all the equipment back and to everyone that I've rented it from. And then there was this one gentleman that I rented uh, a grill from. And he said, um, so how did the event go? And I just started crying. I'm like, oh my gosh, it was a mess. You know, they, they lied, this and that and then the other. And he's like, you know what? You got guts, you know, and I really believe in what you're doing. He said, just tell, promise me you won't give up. I said, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't think this is not, this is going to work for, work out for me. He's like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to invest in you. You can have the grill. Now this is like a professional, you know, state of the art, you know, you know, grill. And he was like, you know what? I just don't want you to give up. He said, you know, you have something good. You have a great product. I, I, I love your business plan. Just, just promise me you'll just keep going and just use this to um, push you forward. So I, I took that as a sign, like maybe I should, you know, people are believing in me, maybe, maybe I should continue. And then I had customers that were there um, that came out to support me. They were like, oh man, the food was great. You know, where can I get the jars? And, you know, I didn't even have a website as of yet. So I, I just started, you know, I created a, the website and people were started ordering and I was like, oh, okay, maybe there's something. So. Uh, that I'm telling you, that event was devastating, but I used that as a, a tool to learn from like mistakes that I've made and what not to do, not making sure to read all the paperwork of, you know, when, when I'm going into contract with somebody, making sure I look it over or have an attorney look it over with you. Um, it, it, it's just, it was definitely a lesson that helped me a lot and to make sure that whenever I'm taking certain steps in business and make sure that it's, 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 it's a beneficial, whether it, whether it's financially or whether I can use it as a marketing tool or whether I can use it just to inform other people on how to get into the business. Every step that I make, I make sure to kind of look at it, read paperwork, read all the literature and see, making sure that this is the right business move for me. Yeah. I find it so heartwarming that story, right? It, you know, what a great story. The, this this idea that I get devastated, right? You you shown words yeah. devastated by what happened, and then somebody comes out of nowhere and gives you that little bit of external validation and a little bit of support. Right. You know, you know, and and maybe. Right. To you, the grill was a huge thing. To him, maybe it was a very minor thing. It doesn't even matter. The, right. the idea here of just providing a little bit of support. And now, how many years have you been in business now? Um, we're going on four years. Four, four years. Four and a half years going on five. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so we go from the genesis of this business, which is like, oh my gosh, I, I might not even be able to continue this to, hey, we're four years going on five years. We're in grocery stores. We've got a business, and and it's it's really growing and thriving. And how much could be pointed to that inflection, where somebody just gives you the opportunity for a little bit of support? So cool. Right. Yes. Yes. And people don't realize, and that that to me has um, taught me a lot. That now that you know, I'm not saying that I am where I want to be in the business because, of course, I want to grow and get into the bigger box stores like Costco and um, Sam's Clubs and things of that nature. But I've learned to, you know, especially with other people that are starting out, to kind of give that helping hand. Where there's tools, uh, one one tool that I use um, quite often was Score.org. It's um, it's a website where if you're starting a business and there's experts in that particular field that um, that you're looking to go into, you can actually go into that website. They'll keep it's like a mentor 
they'll help kind of guide you, kind of connect you with certain people to help you along the way. I, 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 I tell people about things like that. I, you know, I kind of tell them, you know, the things that I've learned, um, the people that I've connected to, any way that I can possibly, you know, kind of help the, um, someone out. I try my best to do so because especially in the food industry and um, it, it's a tough, tough business but knowing the right people and kind of helping having someone to help and guide you there it's it's awesome it's really awesome i think that's true the the food business is a tough one because there's you know all kinds yeah. of products everywhere and that's where the story yeah and the you know authenticity comes in of what it is uh so how i met nikki uh, was at a festival uh, Fort Lauderdale Food and Wine Fest or Las Olas Food and Wine Fest. Um, Las Olas, yeah. Yeah, and we were going around and stopped and tasted her sauce, and I was immediately hooked. You know, bought a bottle, and then a year later, came back, saw the same thing, bought another bottle, um, and in between, do the same now because of that connection, and always, you know, had a conversation with Nikki that day, and. You, know, you can feel it and we took time to actually take a picture together and all kinds of stuff that you yeah. didn't see it at those other booths that we were walking by like other people had products but you didn't get that same kind of interaction and energy and when i saw that i knew that's something you know there's something there and something that i want yeah. to help promote too and you know went crazy on instagram and connected and all that that led us to this interview but um those things matter and building those businesses and building those connections really really matter especially in a crazy field Absolutely. or small small environment yeah. I, I want to make I want to make sure I tracked on something correctly here. Uh, Nikki, you started your business. You have this absolutely awful experience with a with a festival, uh, and you you consider quitting. You don't. You stick with the business, but you don't just stick with the business. You stuck you stuck with the festival model. You're still out there doing festivals. Absolutely. Yes, I'm still out there doing festivals. I, I feel like that's the best way to promote. Um, with festivals, you get people from all different types of walks of life, backgrounds, you know, people enjoy food. And um, you, I, I stick with the festivals that more caters around food, whether it's seafood festivals, wine and food festivals, you know, um, and it, it kind of helped me kind of gauge what people think from different palettes, you know, like I said, backgrounds. And if, if they're responding positively, I know I'm going the right direction food wise, because I, uh, the more people are telling me um, their experience and how they cook with their cultures, it kind of helps me to create other product, product, you know, products. So I, I, I love the festivals. I love interacting um, with people and, and, and they tell me about their family and how they like to enjoy. And if there's a, if they're a chef and what they like, what they enjoy and how they can use my products with their, with their, you know, in their kitchen. I mean, I, I just enjoy that. And I think when people come and they have the opportunity and I have the opportunity to speak to them, they kind of feel that I'm, I'm not just there trying to sell them a product that I really care about, you know, their, you know, them and their products and their families and, and their thoughts, it, it matters to me. And I think that's what connects us. Not only do I have a good product, but I actually care, you know, so yeah, it works. It works. Great marketing tool. I'm just so impressed that you took something that was such a gut punch up front and you you stuck with it. I, I think that takes a, an absolute uh, conviction. Yeah. I, I mm -hmm. think there's a conviction behind it. So it's funny because I hear you say, hey, I seriously thought about not doing this. And then to double down and show the conviction to not just keep doing it, but to, to have conviction in your business plan, plan and the marketing uh, and being consistent with that and following through on that. And, and it works and it doesn't surprise me that it works at the least. I think uh, most things work because we're consistent with them and we're willing to continue to do them. Absolutely. Uh, I think where things break is it's up here with us. It's in our heads and it's in our hearts when we don't have that conviction. I think that is an absolutely incredible story. I, I mean, talk, talk that, that is, that, that is a dominating your fears story right there that I've ever heard. I think it's really cool. Thank you. Yeah, um, it's important. And, and every time with every festival, I, I try to perfect it, you know, and try to do, do things differently or better. And if something that works, I kind of keep keep doing the same, you know, if it works, I, I just continue. But every festival is different. But um, 
it's just remaining consistent, having a good product, great customer service, and um, just interacting with you with the people that comes out there, your customers. That's that's what's important. Great product, great customer service, and um, just just getting getting out there and getting the word out there. Yeah, yeah. The thing I like about the festival idea and is really not only getting to meet the person, but there's a lot of us uh, that really like to support small business. Yeah. You know, if you can get a, a marinade or a sauce that's all natural and you can talk to the person where they're sourcing their ingredients and support Absolutely. someone in your community that's going to give back to your community, I think that's just a great way to go over just some random like big name you know, corporate sauce that, you know, is just really trying to, not saying that there's stuff wrong with this, but if you can support the community and give back, you know, why wouldn't you, that's even, and you know where everything's coming from, it makes a big difference. And, you know, something else that I just want to touch on, and we've seen this a little bit too, more late, you know, a woman owned minority owned business. We don't have enough of those and be able to kind of support that sense and the struggle that comes with that. I'm sure you face some struggle yeah. in that sense. Being absolutely, I'm sure you can tell me some stories, and we'd love to hear some. Uh, some of that struggle that comes with that—that's another thing. It's just super important. Yeah. So the, you know, uh, based on my experience, it's it's definitely male dominated. Um, and um, when I come in there, it's they're like, who you know, they never expect. Okay, Nikki's. Also, you work for the company. No, you know, I'm the owner. You know, I'm making sure to you know, I want my products into your store. Uh, my thing is that I never accept no as a no. If you're if you're not tough skin, this is you know, this is not the business for you. If you just says no and you said you know what they said no, I'm just gonna quit. No. To me, when someone tells me no, they just mean not right now. I'm going back, you know, or maybe another time I'm going back, you know. Um, so, yeah, you know, as a minority, you know, you know, black, you know, but being a black woman owning a business, trying to, you know, get into stores, yeah, it's tough. But you know, it, it's just an obstacle that you just have to climb you know, and that I have to climb. And I, I don't look at it like, oh man, oh me, oh my, no. You just gotta keep trying, just keep going and keep pushing. You know, don't just say, hey, if they don't, they say no today, come, um, I'll go again tomorrow. And they'll see the persistence. You know, I'll even sometimes give them free products. Like, hey, try it, you know, and tell me what you think. You know, um, and they'll come, and I'll just keep coming back until they're just like, you know what? We'll try it out. Let's see, let's see if it works. And um, and it's one thing I always tell people: if you want to, it's it's one thing to have your products into in a store, but it's another thing to make sure you demo, making sure that the customer base that goes into that store knows, you know, what what the product is. Because it's one thing to, I'm, I'm sorry, I have the products next to me, so it's one thing to have to have this and say, like, oh, okay, it's a, it's cute label, you know, but, but what is it? How what does it taste like? But when I'm in those stores, when I get my products in the stores. Um, or anyone else that wants to get the product, make sure that the customers that go into the stores know what 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 they're purchasing. I demo whether I have you know I have samples of my products, whether it's on a meat or crackers or whatever. Have them to taste the food so they can know like, oh, okay, this is actually good. They might not buy today, and that's okay. But they'll remember like, yeah, I remember Nikki, and it was a good product. I'll get it tomorrow, or I'll tell somebody else about it. Like, yeah, this was pretty good, and and go from there. No excuses, determination. You, you, you know, I mean, like, so, so Andre asked you a question, which it could have gone a lot of ways. And, and any answer is a, a good answer in a sense. But, you know, what I hear from you is it doesn't matter, right? You know, it's some of these externals, they, they don't matter. What matters is that I'm, I'm going to keep at it. And I'm not going to allow anything to be an excuse for me to achieve my, my yeah. dreams here with my business. And that, <laughs> that mindset. It's just, yes. it's so important for success in business. Yeah. Andre, you want to say something? I brought up, I brought up the mind. So you, you just jumped on it. Well, I do. And I, I don't want to say that they don't matter because I think they do matter, uh, but I think they're going to be there anyways. Right. And that's, it's just a well sad said. fact that, you know, if I walk into a store and Nikki walks into the store, they're going to give me more attention They're You know, that's just a sure. sad fact of what it's true. So it does matter, but it doesn't matter right. in the sense of if you push through it, you can still push through it. 
Um, so, and it's part of that mindset that we do talk about is, is what you prepare for. So if you know it's going to be more of a challenge and you set yourself up to understand that, it's a lot easier to deal with. So, you know, we know the struggle is real. We know the, right. you know, fortunately that there is that um, hierarchy that's kind of created for in, in business. But you're going to face it and you know that and you can help push through it and you hopefully you get some allies that kind of push through it with you yeah. so that we can get that to go away someday right. but in the meantime it's a real real thing yeah very very well said on andre uh and i'm, I'm with you 100 percent on that it, it 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 to your point it matters right you know it's am i going to allow it yeah. to deter me and am I going to have the mindset where I allow it to deter me? Uh, how much influence am I going to allow that to have on my behavior and my decision making? Uh, you, you brought up, right. Doc, uh, kind of support and, and, and allies. And Nikki, you brought up community again. So you got support early on from somebody. And you talk about how much success you see in your business because you, are, you embrace the community and you make sure that you, the community knows that you care. Uh, how much of your Absolutely. success do you think you can attribute to community it, at large? If I'm successful, it's because of my community. I, 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 I mean, of course, um, you know, working hard, having good products, being determined, um, being determined to be successful, all of that's important. But I am because of my community. You know, if I didn't have a community base that would go out there and support me, you know, you can, I mean, it's one thing to have the, the fill up a shelf, but it's another thing where customers come in and actually purchase, you know, the products off the shelf. So having the community um, behind me and supporting me and asking me, hey, where can I find your products or where can I get, you know, um, what's your website so I can purchase? That's important. That means everything to me. And it's one thing um, if they purchase it the one time, the first time, you know, they want to support. But when they come back, when they're a repeat customers, I mean, ah, that's just that says every that means everything. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm successful because of my community. And yeah. It, it, it's such a strong part of what we believe in uh, as, as a team and a business too. you know, community is is everything. I'm going to I'm going to set something in stone here. We are never again having somebody join us on our podcast talking about delicious food where I am not eating it while we're chatting because I'm right now drooling doing all this talk about your food, Nikki. Uh, so uh, that, that, that's like a real rule we're putting in place, Doc. Now, never again. Nikki, you're not allowed back unless unless I have like something to eat right here. <laughs> we're okay. Sounds good. So, I'll that's make why sure. the doc, yeah. And that's why the Doc is the intelligent one of our group because he's got some in his fridge. So right after he can make sure he mm -hmm. can, can, you know takes care of that need, that mouthwatering need that's been building. I'm rubbing it a little bit more. That's what I love to awesome. do. He's, he's really into that. Uh, <laughs> he, has, he has a need. Uh, I, I I really do I, I appreciate a lot of what you you said there, Nikki, and just kind of the the culmination of where where the business started versus where it is today. So so you said it earlier. Next step is really the bigger box stores. You want to see it in Costco. Absolutely. You want to see it in Walmart, so on and yes. so forth. You, Absolutely. I have no doubt you're going to get there based on the determination I've heard from you and just yeah. hearing your story. I mean, you're, you're going to be there. And I'm going to be super excited to see you there. Absolutely. And it definitely. Us. And I appreciate that. I'm sorry. Send you both, a call you, you, send you? a call out to Costco and see if we can uh, get them to also sponsor us as well as put Nikki's marinades. In there you the, go. Uh, so we can double whammy. There them. you go. Uh, I like that. I like it. <laughs> a little virtual Costco uh, taste test studio, right? <laughs> Why but, not? Why not? I love it. But in the meantime, we yep. know you're not there yet, but we know there is awesome places that they can get a hold of you and get Purchase your product. product. Would you like to let us know and let all our listeners know where they can and what you have for them? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, our web, my website, nikkismarinade.com. And also if you're in South Florida, um, if you visit uh, any Bravo supermarkets or key food, um, food fair there, um, and um, Presidente, 
or we're also in Presidente as well. So just visit our website, www.nikkismarinade.com and you'll be able to kind of direct you what part in South Florida, what city in South Florida you can pick up the, uh, the jars. That's awesome. And of course, we'll have all that information in our show notes. And if you ever make it to a festival, make sure you try to find Nikki because she's awesome. Let, right. let her know that you heard her on our podcast. And she might like, you know, take a picture with you or something, maybe. I just put you on the spot there. <laughs> there you go. There you go. He's, 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 he's giving away stuff for you, Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Yes, I love it. I love it. We actually, um, for your listeners there, if they um, if they go on our website and they order uh, um, two jars, they just have to type in the promo code free shipping, and they can we can ship the products off with, um, without having to pay the shipping costs. So that's awesome for them. Very cool. Thank you for that, Nikki. On behalf of our listeners and viewers, we, we appreciate it. And thank you so much for joining us in the lab here and on our show. We really appreciate having you. I love the conversation. I love to hear your story. And I'm super excited to hear about where it goes from here. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Nikki. All right, Doc. The ultimate story of uh, overcoming doubt, fear, having some determination, perseverance, and not allowing external factors to uh control your 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 behavior right you know being willing to to rise above some of those external facts really pretty interesting story coming from nikki there yeah it was great it's my first time actually hearing her story and how she got there fully um i it was great to hear and just could just see that perseverance and you know, also a piece of that, that there's other people that believe in you and how much that could mean, right? So if you're out there and you support or see something that you like or a company or a business or a person um, that you really enjoy, let them know. That might be the thing that takes them to the next level. And we heard that, you know, someone believing in somebody really made a difference. Uh, so a big thing to take away. Yeah, my, my maybe favorite thing to take away was that uh, – that lesson that uh hand out from one person to the other not a handout but a hand lifting somebody up right somebody higher up on the ladder you know helping somebody climb the rungs uh made all the difference in the world to nikki and her business at that point right at her low there was somebody who was willing to help lift her up and if that doesn't exemplify our our value system and, and the be rich mindset and our, and our man, manifesto, the idea of community and helping other people, heck our, our freebie, right? You know, um, you know, six methods to make sure you don't fail. Uh, it's the idea of community and lifting people up. And that's why we have this podcast. And so I absolutely loved hearing that story from Nikki. I just thought it was, it was perfect for, for who we are and what we do here. And I think what I took from that story was it was great that she got the grill and I'm sure that was a very awesome part too. <laughs> But as I was hearing her say it, I think what made the difference with, for her was just him saying that he believed in her and that she should that she should keep going. <clears throat> with or without the grill, I think that would have been a good takeaway. So, And I say that because if we have people out there listening, they might not be in a position to give a grill or give something you know, tangible, but that support can make all the difference in the world. Uh, that, that simple statement. Absolutely, Doc. Yeah, I'm with I'm with you 100. percent So, hey, if you're still watching, if you're still listening in, uh, thank you for your attention. We hope you got and we trust you got some absolutely great insight and wisdom from our conversation with Nikki Alley of Nikki's Foods LLC. Uh, if you haven't already, remember please like, subscribe, follow, give us a five star review, share it on social media, let people know about us. We are here to help positively impact business owners like you and professionals like you and others that you may know so that they are in a position to better succeed, thrive, and evolve to their greatest potential. And of course, you can always find us on all our social media at JV and the Doctor or at jvandthedoctor.com. And head on over to nikkismarinade.com and buy some of that marinade because I tell you, it is delicious. I can firsthand account. I'm, I'm still not willing to ever have somebody food related on our show again without like the food in front of me i'm, I'm just putting that out there and is that's it, it. that's all i gotta say theme? is it too late to change our theme can we like just turn to a food podcast where we only have people bring us food and drink yeah i my blood pressure is already high but i'm not against the idea so <laughs> <laughs> to be continued that might be where we had right? Who knows? Yep. come back and all find right. out all right i'm hungry hungry doc i'm out i'm out of here all right jb all right. done peace peace out yo <laughs>